day and, mm-hmm. and I saw you guys were flowing on dopamine and serotonin yeah, and, and, yeah. and the differences of those two. If you could give, especially the younger generation athletes, I know, at least for me, I grew up with social media. I mm-hmm. was probably the first wave, first generation that had it going on when I was in the de- developmental stages. Do you have some insights on that? I guess that you could share from the flow you had with Bob and, yeah, and for sure. you can take that any way you want. Yeah, just the difference between the two and, and yeah. why you believe it's important. Yeah, um, with Dr. Bob, I think it's just been just this crazy amount of momentum of doing everything holistically and how to help your health. So first and foremost, I on my um, Apple device, I turn like the brightness as low as it can be. I turn like true tone off. I have it very like non-invasive for your eyes because you know you're on your phone quite a bit. You do discover that. Um, and I also actually got a blue light blocker um, kind of screen protector. It's a dual function thing. You can get it on Amazon for like, I don't know, like 12, 13 bucks. So I do recommend something like that, looking into more of that. I do put my phone on airplane mode quite a bit there's been studies to show people having on specific pockets if they don't alternate your hip bones mm. can weaken there's there is radiation coming off your your phone from the battery from its connection to cell tower especially if you do have bluetooth and the wi-fi things on all the time so those are some those are some hazards i like to share that a lot of the public doesn't really like i mean some people whisper about it but those are serious things that we haven't really divulge a lot of like long-term effects for people so yeah kids be careful just how much you're on your phones um try to have like limited screen time use them when they're necessary on the social media side that's a that's definitely something i haven't really grown up with um it did come up uh relatively a good amount when i was in college um and the thing is with that is there's a constant comparison with other people and everybody needs to know that they're their unique mm-hmm. individual self. And as much as we aspire to be or aspire to understand what these people have accomplished or where they're at in life, we have no idea how they got there. And we don't know whether it's them, you know, in the off hours behind social media, grinding, grinding, or finding having just been presented with just one off random lotto opportunity that they just said, oh, yeah, I'll go with that. And that's where they are there, you know. So unless you're using that as a source of motivation, seeing I love the success stories like Goggins uh, Mm -hmm. is, is an amazing person. He has a great podcast on the Joe Rogan podcast. But unless you're using those measurements of seeing how successful in your eyes a person is getting and, and understanding each step or just getting a relatively in-depth idea of how what it took to get there don't compare yourself to others don't measure your success with where you're at now with where they are where you ought to be in a certain amount of years success much like puberty much like the growth of an individual's body and mind comes in different stages for everyone for everyone's you know life and time frame people don't know what they want to do even when they're 60 years old but then they find it around the corner the next year and they're just like I understand why it took so long for me to get here and I'm glad I discovered this now rather than even in my 40s when people would consider me a full-fledged adult Mm -hmm. so if you're going to use other people's things uh, uh, measurements of success at least go and do your research do your tabloid digging understand what it took for them to get there what they say about personally about what success means to them or just don't even look at it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's kind of, it, it, there's, there are distractions and if, if you could um, trade that kind of, uh, I don't wanna say f- fanaticism, because I think it's important to have, to be a fan of someone, especially if, you, especially if you like the way they think, emulate things. If you could trade that for learning how to improve on yourself or knowledge that you think is relevant to what you wanna do or what you're trying to accomplish, it's easy to pick up a book. Or it's easy to kind of look up something on on Wiki or or look up something on, you know, Google Docs. So think about changing some of that time and and allocating it to how you can work on yourself. That's a a fun thing I like to do. Yeah. Dr. Bob definitely talked about how you do find that addiction, right? And it's not not a natural thing to want to go back to your phone because it's actually releasing that. Those those hormones that don't mean it's like, oh, this is something that's good. That's why you keep coming back to feeding it. We talked about the flip side of that serotonin, the group belonging, Mm. that dynamic, that is where I need people to understand 
I know it might be hard for people to be social, but we are social beings. There's a reason why teammates are so close in team sports. Like there needs to be obviously pressure and work and suffering together that needs to happen in sport, but there also needs to be the laid back time, the getting to know people, the fun, you know, that, that's how we've evolved. That's actually where we release a lot of our recovery hormones for people that don't know mm. that. Then when you step away from, you know, exerting effort and we're around our close people that we care about and love one, that's when a lot of mental and physical recovery does know. happen. Um, so with that, anytime I can get around friends to just be be with them, mm. you know, be focused on them. Not I don't need my phone. If I'm if I'm with the people that really you know, make my day or really I enjoy being around, I, I couldn't, I could not look at my phone for hours. I put that on airplane mode. It's like, this is why I'm here. Mm. So if you can, I challenge you to do that. And I challenge you to find the people that want to put, want you to put your phone away, you know? And yeah. um, anytime you can, you can choose to be in a group setting where you're just kind of kicking it before you, you know, need to go to practice or do that, like really enjoy being in that present moment. Um, I do also suggest if you can, anytime there's a little bit of a, a route where you need to go somewhere and it's in nature, appreciate being in nature in that moment. A lot of us do walk and we're on our phones quite a bit when we're going here to there. I know it helps the time go by fast, but we live in a beautiful place. Um, and I feel that nature is also one of those things that really just shows how, how grateful we have it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an amazing world we live in for sure. That's awesome, man. 